G'day guys, Tom Willis here, coming to you live from Melbourne, Australia. Beautiful sunny day today, thankfully spring is here. Um, this is video four of five in our five and five series on programming tips and tricks, working with ETC EOS, and today I would like to talk to you a little bit about live moves and dark moves and how to clean them up in your queue list. Let's have a look. So, for those of you who know what live and dark moves are, this tutorial is probably not going to be that interesting, but for those of you who occasionally look at your queue list and wonder what these little L and D letters are doing here in this MV column, well, this tutorial is going to uh, come in really handy. Basically, EOS has this really cool function inherent in its queue list where it will look at what all your lights are doing and it will identify if you have any live or dark moves. These are undesirable parameter moves, movements within your queue list. A live move is essentially when a moving light or fixture, a multi-parameter fixture is fading to zero and while it's fading to zero some of its non-intensity parameters are moving to a new position. So for example a moving light is focused down stage center, you hit the cue that fades it to black and while it fades to back it actually tracks upstage. Of course sometimes this is a this is a desirable effect or intentional programming choice but a lot of the time it's an unintended consequence of editing the next cue or copying this cue and placing it out of sequence in your cue list. What can often happen in more complicated shows is that these live moves go unnoticed. And while they are unintentional, they do have a negative impact on the look of that transition. Dark moves are similar, only that they are, incur they are incurring entirely out of sight. So you have a multi-parameter fixture that is off and then in between two cues, other parameters within that fixture change. So for example, a color scroller moves from one color to the next, or a moving light moves to a now redundant position. These are dark moves. And dark moves are more or less wholly unneeded in a show file, especially when we have marking going on. So how do we identify lights that are live moving and dark moving and how do we get rid of these live and dark moves in a safe manner? Because we're going to go into blind and as many of you know, working in blind is a very useful space but can also be a very dangerous space, especially if you start making big changes and lots of them. Let's have a look. I'm going to jump into blind. I'm going to select my cue list and I am going to go down to my first live move, Q3 here. I'm going to use the query function to identify what lights are live moving. If I hit query and then I can select live move here and hit enter, you'll see that I have one light that is live moving. Channel 2 is fading to, to 0 and while in the previous queue, oops, in the previous queue it was in its home position you can see now that it is fading into its stage wash position. And this is unintentional. We don't want it to do this. We just want it to fade out like a normal light. We can fix this simply by selecting the channel to minus intensity at enter. At enter removes any active values and you're left with tracked values. And because we minus intensity, the light will still fade to zero. Be careful when you do that command because obviously we are in tracking mode and doing that without looking at what's happening later down in your queue list, where the next block is, where the next fade up is, can have unintended and destructive consequences. I have made a couple of, I'm just going to undo that and show you that I have made a couple of macros to speed up this process a little bit. And in my blind snapshot, um, I have these macros on hand so that I can very quickly and easily access these functions and execute them. So I'm going to query my live moves. 
And then I'm gonna use a macro which I've created. I've got two here. I've got essentially what I just typed, but in a different way. It's all my non-parameter at enter, which obviously removes them. I've also got one with a queue only command attached to it. And I'm gonna use this one. And you can see that the result is the same. We have successfully removed our live move. Now, if those new values tracked through, then what we also did was create a dark move in the next queue and potentially the queue after. And the downside of using all uh, non-intensity parameters at queue only is that it's like sweeping a broom. You're basically sweeping the problem further and further down your queue list. The good news is eventually you will sweep it out. It just might take a couple of goes to get it. The advantage of this method is that you it's very safe you're not going to unintentionally delete data that is referenced later in the queue list. And it is very thought, thoughtless, a very thoughtless process. We don't need to allocate a great deal of thought to it. All we need to do is see that there is a letter there. So we'll go to queue next, query the dark moves, and get rid of them. Next queue the dark moves and get rid of them. You can see that when I did it that time, it pushed the dark move to the next queue. That's fine. We just keep going down and sweeping, down and sweeping. And eventually you'll find we either hit more dark moves, at which point it doesn't matter. We just continue to sweep. And now you can see we have a plus, and a plus tells us that there is a live move and a dark move in that queue. So let's have a look, and we'll go query live move. Now, this is where I wanted to demonstrate the danger of executing um, an all non-intensity parameter at command without putting queue only in the mix. If we have a look at, at this channel five in the previous queue, it was at full in its stage wash position in Li 201. If we go to the next queue, it goes to zero and changes to home. So it's committing a live move, which obviously we don't want. In the next queue, it's committing a dark move. It's focusing to a new position. It's going back to its Li 201 color. And then in the next queue, it's come up. Now, if we just execute our tidying up, so we query our live move and we don't do queue only and then we go to the next queue and we query our dark move and we do the same thing all non-intensity parameters at enter we've inadvertently deleted the downstage op position and now when we go to our next queue q16 you'll see that our light has come back up, but it's now in its stage wash position, which isn't where it was plotted. And that's why putting queue only in and going queue by queue, yes, it's a little bit slower, but it's much safer. I'm just gonna undo those commands quickly. We're gonna go back and we're gonna do this again going to do this tidy up again, Q14, query live moves, doing our Q only tidy up, we'll query our dark moves and do that at the same time. You can see that once you get into a rhythm with, that, with this, it's very quick. Once again, we've got live moves and dark moves here, so we're just going to do them one at a time. Now, if you hit, like I just did accidentally, query live moves and there are, there are no live moves, it's just gonna give you an error. No issue. Query dark moves, done. You can see here now that we're sweeping that dark move further and further down the queue list again, not an issue, because all it takes is one more of those, and we have cleaned our entire queue list of live and dark moves. And if we go back to Q14 and have a look at channel five, we can see that Oops, sorry, Q13, I meant. We can see that it's in full in its stage wash in Li 201. 
in the next queue. Oops. It goes to zero. There's no live move there, so it's going to fade out cleanly. The next move, it's going to mark. Our auto mark is enabled, so we're not worrying about marking at this point, but you can see that there is no live or dark move going on there. It's just a marked move, which is fine. It's notated in a different place, and it's obviously a desirable thing to mark. And then in our next queue, that light is going to fade up in its downstage OP area, which is what we wanted. That's how it was programmed originally. So we have successfully cleaned our queue list of live and dark moves, and yet we have successfully preserved the look of our show. And that is how I clean up my queue list. So hopefully you found that interesting, useful. Uh, come back tomorrow for the final video in our 5 and 5 series. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you soon.